time. I'm Cindy Edwards. And I'm Jerry Penicoli. Nice to see you this morning. How are you? We're going to talk about Christum. 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 That would be, that would be Christmas custom customs. When you put it together, it becomes a Christum. I like that new word. You just coined a word, a Christum. <laughs> did. Yeah. Let's talk about Christums. Uh, the custom of kissing under the mistletoe. Did you know that came from England? I didn't, but uh, I'll tell you this. Mistle, mistletoe <laughs> stays up at, at Your uh, my house, house all year round. All year round. <laughs> It started because Lots it was a mistake. Going on. No, it started because it was a mistake. Mm -hmm. I forgot to take it down, yeah. and now it's like, hey, hey, want any it excuse there all the time. Okay, the original custom was that the berry was picked from the sprig of mistletoe before the person could be kissed, and when all the berries were gone. No more kissing. Oh, that's okay. A bummer. <laughs> All right. So, why the Christmas tree? Well, the evergreen fir tree has traditionally been used to celebrate winter festivals, both pagan and Christian, for thousands of years. Pagans used branches to decorate their homes during the winter solstice, as it made them think of the coming spring. The Romans used fir trees to decorate their temples, and Christians used them as a sign of everlasting life with God. Well, nobody is really sure when fir trees were first used as Christmas trees. But it's imagined that it began about 1,000 years ago in Northern Good Europe. Guess. Many early, early Christmas trees were hung upside down from the ceiling using chains. Do you know what? And I'm I glad they, that we don't do that anymore. Well, no, we do do it. I see it in catalogs a lot. They, upside they sell down. upside down Christmas trees. Okay, going yeah, back to tradition. Which, which I kind of, I kind of, right. it's different. And, and should you go real or fake? Well, a spokesperson from the American Christmas Tree Association says the minimal use necessary to make an artificial tree eco friendly is seven years. Okay. Use it for three and a real tree is actually better for the environment. Why wouldn't you use a fake tree longer than I three don't know. years? I mean, Some people get tired of their I've trees and chuck them. No, anyway, I... the National Tree Growers Association, of course, says you should always choose a plant over a non-biodegradable uh, plastic tree. Well, well, but if you keep your fake tree for a long time, look, there's nothing like the smell of a real tree. I agree. True. But I, I, Shouldn't you save the trees and use the Well, if a they fake? come from a farm, it's okay. Okay. All right. Only if it comes from a farm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, did you know these are the most popular plant at Christmas time? Something has come between us. The poinsettia. That's a, is it really poinsettia or is it poinsettia? Well, it's, it's actually not point anything. It's poin. I was. I've always been calling it a point. A poinsettia? Yeah. Well, and you're it was wrong. A, I know I was wrong. But it can be a poinsettia, a poinsettia, poinsettia, poinsettia. or a poinsettia, as you're about to so find it, out. So both are acceptable. Yes. Both pronunciations. Yes. And okay. the actual flower. Yeah. The color. Ooh, this smells so good. This is the flower, this little yellow part here. The colored part. It's a leaf. That's what most people think are flowers. They're actually known as bracts. They're not leaves? They are leaves, but they're also known as bracts. You're a brat. <laughs> B R A C T S. Poinsettias <laughs> are not poisonous. If a Wait, if, whoa, whoa, no, whoa, listen, whoa, whoa, listen. Whoa. There was a study done. If a pet snacks on the leaves, they may end up with an upset stomach. Wait a second, bro. We just had a, a pet expert say Holly a couple weeks ago. Are toxic. So the berries are toxic. Not Holly berries, not poinsettias. They're not as dangerous okay, as people I think would, they are. I would like to. I will show you the study. No, I. I there are over a hundred varieties that. of poinsettias. We've been hearing this for years. Yeah, well, it's a myth. And pet experts say it all well, the time. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're going to have to. Well, we are not we're going to agree to disagree. Right. Orban's Nursery in Bradenton has a whole bunch of these. And did I, you go there? I did. I recently paid them a visit. Take all a look. Right. This time of year, Orban's Nursery goes into overdrive, getting poinsettias packed up and ready for consumers. Now, is it poinsettia or is it poinsettia? <laughs> it's tomato, tomato, you can say it however you want. <laughs> Whatever you call them, they're the most popular plant during the Christmas season. They're also known as the Christmas flower, lobster flower, and Mexican flame leaf. Yeah, that's a poinsettia. Oh, this is the poinsettia. What's this one, Tyler? That is ice crystal. What kind is this, Tyler? That's a premium white poinsettia. This is a marble poinsettia. Do you know what type this is? This is Saturnus red. How many different types of red do you have? Uh, probably at least 15 right now. Wow. So how did the poinsettia get its name? Well, it is named after Dr. Joel R. Poinsett. He was the US ambassador to Mexico. And it got the name when he introduced the plant to the United States. 
Sure, they look beautiful now, but how do you keep them that way? Most people overwater them in the house. Um, and what I recommend is that you set them in a, like a little bowl of water, let them soak it up, and then you probably don't need to water them in a house for at least a week, maybe two. Okay. Um, and if you pick it up after it's wet, you kind of feel the weight, and then come back a few days later, and if it's real light, then it probably needs water. What about planting them? Um, they like a well-drained area outside. They like partial sun. They don't want full sun, especially summertime here. It's really hard on them. Is this the only time of year that's big for poinsettias? Yes. <laughs> so yes. this is what you live now, for. Th yeah, really, it is. We have a semi going out tomorrow morning of 500 cases, and then at least four more semis by the end of the week. How many years has this been in the family? Uh, it's going on 100. Um, I'm fourth generation. My uh, great uncle would have been the first one to start it, and my grandfather, now my dad, and then me. What's happening here? It looks like a flood. So we use sub-irrigation to water our poinsettias when they get to a certain size. 98% um, of the water that we use, we recirculate and use again. So we're a pretty green operation. Yes, you're very environmentally friendly. I love it. Some of these plants are quite green, and they've got light bulbs over them. So what's going on here? So we light the plants to bring them into flowering at optimal timing for shipping. OK. So stuff that's going to ship out later, like close to Christmas, we want it to be more green until it's optimal to ship. So how do you keep it more green? So we have the light bulbs over the top, uh -huh. and we'll leave them on for about 15 minutes a night, and that keeps them from changing colors. Huh. And these ones? That was natural daylight, so no lights over that, just changed on its own. So Cindy, where are these gonna go? The whole shipment, right? Yes, ma'am. It's going to Jerry Penacoli. What do you think that'll cost? Uh, probably fifteen to 16000 Okay, he will pay upon delivery. Sounds Thank good. you very much. Perfect. Good job. All right. <laughs> Enjoy, Jerry. Now, do your best to keep them alive. They look that's great going to be very at the house. Expensive. No, they look really good. <laughs> but they were the ones I got for 99 cents at Home Depot on Black Friday. You have to be careful with these things because you can overwater. And I, you want do you that. To, I want you to, tomorrow, I want mm -hmm. you to have the study available so we can, because I know there are a lot of people saying, wait a second, I've heard I all my know. life that poinsettias are poisonous for pets. So you need to deliver that study and we need to talk about okay. it. Okay. I right? also read that a 50 pound child would have to eat 500 leaves for this to be toxic. Okay, but dogs are and smaller. And dogs and cats, too. I'll tell you what, it's for Christmas, we're going to get no longer Freebie and considered... Nigel some poinsettias and force feed them to them. I'm no, kidding. No, we're not. I'm kidding. And, and by the way, in Mexico, the poinsettia is a perennial shrub that will grow 10 to 15 feet tall. Do you know, my mother had a poinsettia that she planted, and it grew to be that tall really? in, the, in the central Florida area. She's amazing. Yeah. yeah, and I want to know why my poinsettias that I planted last year are still green. They haven't turned red. Uh, I have a lot of questions. Yeah, they're probably getting too much light. You think so? Yeah. All right. Yeah, All right. too much okay. light. Okay. Okay. Um, well, Cindy, thank you. That was a beautiful story. Here. Yeah, that's thank for you. you. It's fake. <laughs> That'll thank live you forever. So much. That's we'll be right, right. back. <laughs>